that's my little Margie. I've been both mother and father to her since she was born. She's grown up now, and you think my job's all done, eh? <laughs> well, that's what you think. When she was little, I could spank her and make her mind me. I had control over her. I made her eat her spinach, no candy before meals. And when she disobeyed, I took her roller skates away for a week. But what can you do when a girl reaches this age? She's completely out of hand. I've got a problem, believe me. I've got a problem. That's my father. I've raised him from childhood. That is, my childhood. He's nearly 50 now, and you'd think he'd settle down, wouldn't you? Well, that's what you think. Today, he looks better in shorts on a tennis court than fellas 25. Girls wink at him, and what's worse, he winks back at them. I want a nice, old, comfortable father. I try to look after him, but he just won't settle down. I've got a problem, believe me, I've got a problem. Hello? Telegram? Yes, operator, please read it. Tonight at nine? Thank you. Hi, Margie, what's up? I just got a telegram. Ralph Brooks will be in around nine tonight. Ralph Brooks? Oh, the Marine Lieutenant. He's uh, got a weekend pass going to bunk with Dad. Is it finished, Roberta? Is what finished? With the sweater you're knitting that I promised to knit for him. Oh, not quite. Maybe next time he's in. Do I get a free ride this morning? Or is your dad already left? Oh, he left early. Have you met them yet? Hmm? Oh, the new couple. Not yet. Your father said you wouldn't rest until you met them. What's so special about them? Why haven't you heard? They're newlyweds. So what? But don't you think it's exciting, having people on their honeymoon right next door? The least we should do is welcome them, make them happy here. Good morning. I'm your next door neighbor, Margie Albright. Uh, this is Roberta Townsend. My father's Vern Albright. He works for Honeywell and Todd, investment counselors. More detail facts, like shoe sizes, birth dates, and who's our favorite movie star, furnished on request in plain envelope. <laughs> I'm only trying to make our new friends feel at home. Oh, there's your wife. Hi there. <laughs> uh, honey, I'd like you to meet a couple of our neighbors, Miss Albright and Miss Townsend. I'm Richard Calkins, and this is Norma. And we'll just call you Norma and Dick, and you can call us Margie and Roberta. Oh, well, fine. What else should I tell them about us, honey? Oh, Richard, please. What is it? <laughs> well... We're newlyweds. No. Roberta, newlyweds. How long? <laughs> Two, Two days. days. Oh, isn't that nice? Now, I'm not married myself, but I'd like to offer a little advice. Margie, please. Uh, what do you do, Mr. Calkins? I'm an actor. An actor? But about that advice... Margie. Roberta, I'm only going to offer a simple matter of fact... Your wonderful marriage is only two days old, and you're going to be together so many, many long years, and... Well, I'd just like to remind you of one basic rule. Uh, brush your teeth three times a day. Come on, Margie, let's go. Don't ever let jealousy come between you. You sound like quite an authority on happy marriage. Well, no, but you hear so much about things like that. I want a happy marriage when I take the step, and, well, I like to try and help others achieve what I hope to achieve for myself. Well, thanks a lot, Margie, but you don't have to worry about Norma and me. There isn't a jealous bone in our bodies. <laughs> Wonderful. I'll give you an example. Honey, guess who I ran into yesterday? Peggy Hutchinson. You see, Peggy was my girl before I married Norma. And <laughs> they were pretty bitter rivals. Oh, we certainly were. <laughs> Tell me, dear, are you, uh, are you jealous because I saw Peggy yesterday? Oh, insanely. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy you're the way you are. But some wives would start pumping right away. Where did you meet her? How long did you stay with her? What's the deal? Aren't you over her yet? <laughs> Honey, where did you meet her? Uh, she dropped in at my dressing room. Well, I hope we'll be seeing more of you. Honey, how long did she stay? Oh, I don't recall. 
I'd like to meet your dad. You'll have to all come over some evening. Richard, how long did Peggy Hutchinson stay? Well, honey, I don't remember. Maybe a half an hour, 20 minutes. It doesn't matter. I... Aren't you over her yet? Honey! And why did you wait until now to tell me? Why didn't you tell me last night? Well, it wasn't important. Oh, now, let's not be silly about... Take your hands off me! Good morning. I'm Marjorie Albright. I live next door. Mind if I drop in and break up your home? Honey! Everything my mother said about you was true. You can't be trusted. Oh, for Pete's sake, Norma, just because I run into an old friend, a darn nice kid. Nice! I knew it! You're it's just a little lover's quarrel. They'll both be laughing about it in another hour. All right, come on. How long did Peggy Hutchinson stay? Are you going to keep it up all night? Stop breaking things! I'll break things if I want! That's been going on ever since I got home tonight. What kind of maniacs moved in there anyway? Aren't they terrible? If you can throw things, so can I! Oh, this is disgusting. What are they fighting about? I guess it's just one of those family squabbles you hear about. I'm certainly glad you paid attention to me and didn't try to meet them. I wouldn't want you to get mixed up with people like that. Not to change the subject, but I understand a girl resembling me was seen headed west on Route 66 about two minutes from now. Margie? Maybe she was talking about some other nice girl who lives next door. What did you do to them? Just tried to help their marriage a little, that's all. Just tried to help their marriage a little? Margie, tell me exactly what you said to them. Go ahead, smash it! Just another one of those cheap things your family gave us. Maybe Peggy Hutchinson's family would have given you something better. Norma, I've had my quota. Now get this and get it straight. Me, yours truly, Richard Calkins, I'm leaving. I'm packing my bag and moving to a hotel. Oh, oh leaving you? Don't make me laugh. It really wasn't my fault, Dad. Well, if you hadn't gone over, they wouldn't have gotten on the subject of jealousy. I'm sorry, Dad, honest. Ralph will be here in a little while, and it'll be terrible with them fighting like that. Dad, couldn't you go over and sort of reason with them? Well, I suppose it's the least I can do. Right now, before Ralph comes, huh? All right, I'll get my jacket. Goodbye, Norma. It's been charming. Else. Uh, Mrs. Calkins, I'm Vern Albright, uh, Margie's father. May I chat with you a moment? Oh, of course. Come in. Now, mark my word, Mrs. Calkins, he'll be back. And if you don't say anything about it, everything will be okay. You've been very nice, Mr. Albright. Oh! What's the matter? Something just flew into my eye. Oh, let me see. How's that? Oh, wonderful. You're so gentle. <laughs> don't ever mention that I dropped in. Some husbands are funny about things like that. <laughs> sweetheart. Oh, I'm glad, Richard. Let's just forget everything, okay? Okay. 
Honey, everything is going to be all right. Oh, thanks, Dad. But remember, don't ever meddle in other people's affairs again. I promise. Is there something you want to tell me? No, no, I just like to forget everything. Oh, well, uh, would you mind if I asked you to tell me something? Of course not, darling. What is it? Oh, just this, darling. What was that old bird from next door doing over here? He was just trying to straighten out the mess you started. Is that so? Yes, that's so. And what did you call that little scene you played with him in the corridor? Something was in my eye. Oh, sure, an eyelash, no doubt. And to think you had the nerve to get sore at me just because I saw Peggy Hutchinson yesterday. Oh, shut up, shut up. I'm no sooner out of the house when you invite that, that gray-headed old gopher over here. Who's a gray-headed old gopher? How are they coming in over here? The section's good all over the place. All right, come on. How long did Peggy Hutchinson stay? Oh, we're back on her. I thought we were doing the gray-headed old gopher bit. Shut up. Just shut up. That's all. Shut up! We've got to do something about them before Ralph gets here. I've got an idea. Roberta. Oh, I haven't seen Roberta in weeks. The name is Smith. Mary Smith. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> Roberta, at least listen to me. You came back, but I'm really leaving. Yes, I am. Me, yours truly, I'm leaving. Ha, ha, ha! After all, they don't have a thing against you. Please, Roberta, go over and talk to them. Margie, this is one time I'm not getting mixed up in one of your little fiascos. That's probably Ralph now. Hi, Margie. Hi, Ralph. What's the matter? Local problem. I'm afraid even the Marines can't help. Oh, um, could I make a quick phone call? I have to report where they can reach me. Oh, sure. Go on in the living room. He's not going to get away with it. Yeah, okay, Walt. So long. Would you see who that is, Ralph? Okay, Margie. Oh. Ralph! Well, what happened? Ralph, what happened? Well, I don't know. I opened the door and I got a glimpse of a rather nice-looking fellow, a friendly appearance, a pleasant smile on his face. And he hit me. Goodbye, Richard. Bye-bye, Norma. Don't stay too long. You will see. <laughs> Now, I don't think I gave in, but somebody's got to do something before there's murder around here. Oh, thanks, Roberta. Oh, Miss Townsend. I couldn't help overhearing your, your difficulties. Could we have a little talk? Oh, sure. Come in. It's uh, swell of you to bother. in your arms and kiss her. Go ahead now. Show me what you're going to do. I won't take no for an answer. I'm crazy about you, baby. I'm going to kiss you. There. How's that? Wonderful. I'd better go before your wife comes back. seen just like this in a movie once, and there was a perfectly innocent explanation, but the wife wouldn't listen. I don't want an explanation. Oh, you saw the same picture. No, let's not talk about 
Miss Townsend. Let's talk about that gray-headed old gopher. Oh, I wish he'd stop calling me that. I told you, Mr. Albright only came over to... Oh, what's the use? You're too pig-headed to listen to anything that even resembles reason. But as for you and that... that... Here I come. That woman across the hall. I didn't come out so bad at that. That bleached blonde. I don't mind the rest of you finally learning the truth, but I've been trying to keep it from myself. Now, everybody listen to me. We've sincerely tried to straighten them out, but... I wish you would go back to your mother. You deserve each other. No, Norma, don't throw it! Monster, monster, monster! As I was saying, we've given that monster, I mean that fellow and his wife, every chance to find out how wrong they are. But they're obviously so unreasonable that we're just wasting our time. Dad, maybe I should go over and... Sit down! As of right now, we're washing our hands of the whole thing. We're not getting in any deeper. Understood and agreed? Well, I wish you'd had this agreement before I came in. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Ralph. Which one do you like most, Peggy Hutchinson, or that bleached blonde across the hall? Neither. I like the gray-headed old gopher. I wish he'd stop calling me that. You're exactly like your father. By the way, does he still spend all of his time in the bar? No, he can't get in anymore. It's always filled with your relatives. You know, I've thought everything over, and I believe you about Mr. Albright. I believe you about Miss Townsend. And Peggy Hutchinson? And Peggy Hutchinson. Oh, honey. <sighs> hmm. Richard, what is it? They've got it coming to them. What are you talking about? Look, honey, our nerves have been shattered. We haven't been able to get any sleep, and well, we practically worked our way into a divorce. Let's see how they like a dose of the same. Oh, please, honey, we've been through enough. Honey, we're not going to go through anything, but they are. Well, all right, but nothing too drastic, huh? Oh, no, just a couple of innocent little gags, that's all. Hmm, 4 a.m. Let's get started. Hello? Mr. Albright? Mr. Albright, this is... I'm down at the Farden scene. It's your old friend, Morton Waterby. Uh, well, ju ju just a second. Don't talk so fast. I said it's Morton Waterby. He keeps asking for you. He's going fast. You better get down here. Get down where? Down to Kramen on the Chafford and on the corner. Hurry, Mr. Albright. Hurry. It's your old friend, Morton Waterby. He keeps asking for you. Hurry, Mr. Albright. He's going fast. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, Mr. Albright? There's been an accident. He's asking for me. We've got to hurry. Oh. Dad, what's it all about? We haven't a second to lose. Please, Dad, where are we going? Honey, we haven't time for talking. I think he's dying. Who's dying? Morton Waterby. Well, who's Morton Waterby? Oh, I don't know, but he's asking for me. No, I, I don't know him. Well, who called you? A grave at Chari Chen. Oh, that, that doesn't sound familiar either. Well, we'll find out all about it when we get there. Uh, where are we going, Mr. Albright? Uh, Kramer and Chapa Erton. Kramer and Chapa Erton? Yeah, he said on the corner. On the corner? Yeah, on the corner of uh, Kramer and Chapa Erton. Oh, say, this is ridiculous. Here it is, 4.15 in the morning, and we're going to see Morton Waterby. I don't know him, and he's dying, and he's asking for me on the corner of Kramer and Chapa Erton. Well, we might as well go back to bed. And if that fella calls again, be sure and ask him where the heck the corner of Kramer and Chapa Erton is. Wait a minute. What'd you say that first fella's name was, Mr. Albright? Uh, a grave of Chari Chin. No, nope. I don't know him. Oh, wasn't last night enough, dear? Honey, that just took care of the old gopher. Now for our bleached blonde friend.
Hello. Hiya, babe. Let me talk with Mr. Albright. Oh, you have the wrong number. I can give you Mr. Albright's number or I'll run over and get him. Oh, I see. It, you must be Roboida. Old Albright's told me all about you. <laughs> That's why I didn't mind fixing him up a date with my kid sister. He assured me there wasn't nothing between you two, so, well... Being as how you're just friends, I don't mind him dating me, kid sis. Uh, how's your lumbago? Lumbago? Yeah. Yeah, Albright explained how you're kind of beat up, but kind of nice to have around on lonely nights to play checkers with. How did you get my number? Oh, uh, Albright must have given it to me by mistake. I'll, uh, I'll call him direct. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Roberta. My lumbago's just fine, thank you. Lumbago? You don't even own a set of checkers. Checkers? Richard? Oh, please, honey, no more. Oh, honey, just one more little gag. I got the loot on from the janitor. And Margie Albright kind of goes for this lieutenant, see? Well, I think maybe this might cause her a fraction of what we went through yesterday. Oh, oh now, don't worry. I do like you, Ralph. I like you a lot. Look, Margie, when I get out of service, I'll answer it. I'd better answer it. Well, let's both answer it. All right. Excuse me, ma'am, but I've got a message for... Oh, there you are, Lieutenant. Sorry to disturb you, sir, but, well, some of the boys, your friends, you've been nice to, well, they figured somebody should come up here and warn you, sir. Warn me? Yes, sir. Uh, your wife is looking for you, sir. My wife? Yes, sir. Well, the rest is up to you, sir. Hey, where are you? Where'd you go? Margie, you got to listen to me. That was all a big mistake. I, I don't understand. Sure, it was a mistake. You'd better go, Ralph. Oh, Margie, I give you my word. I'm not married. Margie, please. All right. You won't go without being told, so now I'll tell you in terms you'll understand. Get out of here, you... you potential bigamist. I won't go, and you're going to listen. Stop being pig-headed. Who's pig-headed? You're pig-headed! I said get out! Get out! <laughs> Oh, honey, don't you think that's kind of mean? Well, she had it coming to her. Don't worry, I'll get the lieutenant off the hook before things get too rough. Well, I, I had to explain everything. I didn't want to cause any real harm. Let's just call it even, okay? <laughs> I don't blame you a bit, Dick. It was my fault. Well, let's just all be good friends from now on. and No more tricks, huh? No more tricks. <laughs> See ya. Then they took it okay, huh? Everything's fine. You know, honey, I hope we've learned something from all this. From here on in, we never jump to conclusions and no more jealousy. Why, just think how the whole thing started, just because I told you Peggy Hutchinson stopped in to see me. <laughs> you know, you never told me. How long did she stay? Mm, it's hard to say. Maybe an hour. Oh, an hour. Yesterday you said maybe a half hour, maybe 20 minutes. Don't really remember, sweetheart. but at least I intend to get some sleep. Well, he got his 